organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. On this edition of Daily Iowa TV, organ donations? No, not that kind of organ. See what one giant donation is doing for a local Iowa City church. Also, learn how everyone's favorite bird, Herky the Hawk, has developed throughout the years. And with the NFL season getting underway tomorrow, we'll let you know where our favorite former Hawkeyes will be playing this season. All that and much more on the way next. Daily Iowa TV is coming at you. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowa. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now you can see the news every night on Daily Iowan TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for tuning in to your Wednesday edition of Daily Iowan TV. I'm Jacob Esser. And I'm Rebecca Swives. Organ donations with a twist. The University of Iowa is saying goodbye to one of the most historic instruments on campus. The organ entertained thousands in the Clapp Recital Hall, but now it's getting a new home. Our own Stephen Duran tells us more about how the instrument was saved. Clapp Recital Hall has sat empty for over five years after the devastating flood of 2008. Over this time, decisions were made to tear down the hall. However, the new owners of the building did not want to see its historic organ go down with. After many community organizations filed their requests for the organ, the team at Peterson Contractors made their decision. And since then, we've been uh, hurriedly uh, trying to dismantle it and getting it down with the assistance of uh, Dobson Organ Company from Lake City, Iowa. Members of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church have indeed been carefully dismantling one of the largest working pipe organs in the country. With the presence of this instrument in the church's new upcoming facility, Matthew is confident the organ will broaden the music and community aspects of the church. Not only will we have an instrument that will be able to uh, lead worship in a, in a richer way, um, but it's also going to be a way for us to uh, reach out to the community to host uh, uh, concerts and recitals uh, and even uh, conventions. Throughout this project, support and excitement has come from church and Iowa City community members alike. And Matthew hopes with the continued support and progress of the new building, the organ will be up and running in 2015. Stephen Duran, Daily Iowan TV. Over the years, University of Iowa's mascot, Herky, has had a few different makeovers. The Herky project that began 10 years ago redesigned statues of the mascot like the one pictured here. Recently, four new statues were released to the public. Project coordinators say that they expect 71 more Herky statues to be released by spring of 2014. Any artists and businesses of Iowa City and the Johnson County area may purchase and design their very own Herky statue. The Iowa City Police Department has had a lot of action throughout the years. Downtown Iowa City and surrounding neighborhoods have seen an increase in the number of police officers. The city received a grant to create two new positions. One new enforcer is dedicated to helping and protecting the downtown area, while the other oversees neighborhood issues. Downtown liaison David Schwartz said, quote, I've got to spend hours upon hours downtown. We have built that trust between the police department and people downtown, end quote. Schwartz also stressed the importance of creating a safe and clean environment for all. And coming up later in the show, Food for Thought. Learn how UI students are gaining more freedom on what food they can eat throughout the semester. And Hawkeye Buzz is back, and I'll tell you about all the hot spots to visit over the weekend. And in sports, more analysis from Saturday's loss. But first, we have Daily Iowa TV's Tiara Simpson here to talk about this week's weather forecast. Tiara, take it away. Thanks, guys. You've probably noticed the beautiful weather outside. Lucky for us, we can expect more of that tomorrow. Tomorrow morning will be a cool 75 degrees, but the afternoon will heat up to a high of 86 degrees with partially cloudy skies. This will continue until the evening when the temperature will drop to 73. Looking towards the rest of the week, Friday will be a steamy 91 degrees. Saturday and Sunday will also reach a high of 91 degrees with a 30% chance of a thunderstorm on Sunday. Monday will be 88 degrees and cloudy, but Tuesday will cool off slightly with temperatures dipping to 86 degrees. 
I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready for some cool, cooler weather. Back to you two at the desk. The one thing that is constantly on a college student's mind, food of course, BY has changed students' meal plans to a block plan system. That means students can use meal swipes anytime during the semester and the swipes won't expire until December. In addition, students may now use their cards at various re retail locations to buy meals outside of the cafeteria. This includes Sea Stores and Burge, Hillcrest, and Mayflower. Jill Irvin, the director of the UI Dining, said that the university contemplated the new system for a few years before giving it a go. With the block plan, um, students can use their meals um, in a way that better suits their needs. Irvin hopes that the students will recognize the value of the new system. Wednesday afternoon, President Obama spoke in Sweden about the conflict in Syria. He left open the possibility of sending retaliation over to Syria, even if Congress did not approve this action. Since the country was accused of using chemical warfare, this talk heightened. Congress will be set to discuss which actions to take when they resume session in a few short weeks. 53-year-old Ariel Castro, who was found guilty of kidnapping three Ohio women, was found dead in his jail cell late Tuesday night. Castro was convicted of 937 counts in court, including kidnapping and rape this past summer. Investigation on his suicide will continue. Now let's toss it over to Alyssa Bergamini for our Wednesday segment, Hawkeye Buzz. Alyssa, what is buzzing? Thanks, guys, and everyone, welcome back to this week's edition of Hawkeye Buzz. It's hump day, so that only means one thing. The weekend is just around the corner. And although it may not feel like it, the summer season is quickly winding down. But the weekend activities in Iowa City are only heating up. Starting with tomorrow, the University of Iowa Seaman Center will be hosting a John Deere Day. And for those of you who are interested in engineering or public health, this is a great opportunity. So go check it out, and this starts at 10 in the morning. On Friday, Camp will present a glow-in-the-dark dodgeball tournament in Hubbard Park, starting at 10 p.m. How can you pass up free food, free drinks, and the first place team in the tournament will receive a $100 prize. And when you're done watching the Hawkeyes take on the Bears at Kiddick Stadium, come check out Summer of the Arts Saturday Night Concert Series. The Ped Mall will be booming with live music of local bands to family-friendly events, which will take place all night. Well, that's all I have for you guys today, and stay tuned next week for a special interview with a local celeb. Rebecca and Jacob, back to you guys. Thanks for that buzz, Alyssa. A and did I hear something about glow-in-the-dark dodgeball? And free food. I don't know many college kids that would pack up. Pass up free <laughs> food and dodgeball. Yeah, I guess. But you know what? Now it's time that we're going to turn it over into Cody Goodwin for a look on everything black and gold. Cody, what's going on? Thanks, Rebecca. Hello, and welcome back to the Daily Iowan TV Sports Studio. With the NFL season set to kick off tomorrow night in Denver, today we are taking a look at where you can see some of your favorite former Hawks playing this 2013 football season. As 53-man rosters were finalized this week, 26 former Hawkeyes made the cut across 16 different rosters. That's half the league. Micah Hyde made the cut in Green Bay, making Mike McCarthy's roster as the third-string cornerback. Hyde was drafted by the Green Bay Packers in the fifth round of this year's draft, 159th overall. He recorded 240 tackles in 51 career games for the black and gold. Chad Greenway will look to add to the phenomenal season he had last year for the Minnesota Vikings last year. Greenway finished the year second in the NFL with 148 combined tackles. Dallas Clark changes teams for the second time in two seasons, joining up with the defending Super Bowl champion Baltimore Ravens. He compiled 47 receptions for 435 yards with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last season. Sean Green is another former Hawkeye changing uniforms this season. Green will play back up to Chris Johnson in Tennessee. He had 1,069 yards and 14 starts for the Jets last season. Finally, after being cut by the Chiefs on August 25th, former Hawkeye quarterback Ricky Stanzi was claimed off waivers on August 27th by the Jacksonville Jaguars and will serve as their third string quarterback. Former Hawks in the NFL to Hawks still sporting the black and gold. The Hawks came into look in 2013, looking to shake off a miserable 2012 campaign, which saw the black and gold outfit lose six consecutive conference, game, conference games excuse me, en route to a 4-8 and eight season, the worst under head coach Kirk Ferentz since the late 90s and early 2000s. As you can imagine, a lot of raw emotion post-game. You have to. I mean, you just flush it. It's what you do every week. And tomorrow we'll come in, watch the film, make the corrections, and then focus on our next opponent. Um, 
I mean, first half we uh, took a little time to get going, then started rolling a little better. Uh, somebody kind of had the, their defense on their heels, and second half, I mean, we're doing the same thing, but it was. It was those third and shorts that we just couldn't convert. We just couldn't get the first downs after that. Something that this team just needs to learn how to do, or is it just something that will come eventually? No, we just need guys out there making plays. Uh, skilled players out there have to make plays, and uh, you know we really didn't at the end of the game today. And uh, it's what we have to do, um, and that's what we just got to keep working on, more consistent, and uh, be more physical too. You guys look back at other things, all facets of the game. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, that's what coaches do. They try to help us improve on all plays. You know, you can't predict when the critical plays are going to be, so you just got to try and make sure that, you know, you're at your best when those critical plays happen. I, I can't tell you when they're going to be, you know, but we did plenty of things that we need to correct. We now bring in Daily Iowan football reporter Matt Cable to discuss Iowa's progress as they head into week two of the 2013 season. Now, Matt, what have you seen from this year's team so far? I know it's a small sample, but what have we seen that may be different from last year? Well, Cody, I think one of the biggest differences that we've seen from this team is their no-huddle offense that they're running under offensive coordinator Greg Davis, who's now in his second year. The team is really moving the ball up the field at a fast pace, and I think that that's really going to help them out, especially with... Jake Rudock, new quarterback for the Hawkeyes, running the offense under Greg Davis for his second year now. And I think that Rudock himself is also one of the biggest changes from last year. What we have here is a national championship winning quarterback from high school coming in to play for the Hawkeyes. And he looked on Saturday as if he is ready to take this team under his reins and lead them to a better season than last year. Now, he did throw a late game interception that cost the Hawks the game. But from what we saw, he was completing routes. He was able to score with his arm and his legs. And I think that with Rudock, that they have a really strong chance. And we also saw running backs Mark Wiseman and Damon Bullock form a competent duo in the backfield. And together, that would open up the play action for the team and really start to open up the downfield plays for Rudock and his receivers. Lots of offensive excitement from the Hawkeyes in week one. Now, tell us, Matt, what needs improvement before Saturday's game? Well, I think that Rudock will have to mature a little more in his late game situations, and the defense will need to step up a little bit more. Containing, They did a good job containing the run, but they gave up some big plays in the air. And I just think that with uh, the solid core of linebackers, that they need to have a big effect on containing the Missouri State offense. Missouri State offense kind of comes in the form of their quarterback, Kiara Harris, who will lead the Bears in on Saturday. Now, eight FCS schools beat FBS schools in week one, something that's almost unheard of. Quickly, now tell us, what does Iowa have to do to avoid becoming a part of that losing FBS group? Cody, I just think they, they need to play regular Iowa football. They need to run the ball, pass the ball, play solid defense, and the Bears shouldn't be a big problem for them. Iowa's never lost to an FCS school. And that's all they need to do, play Iowa, play true Iowa football. Establish the run, an effective play action pass. You heard it here first from football reporter Matt Cable. Thank you a bunch, Matt. And on a final note, the Pittsburgh Pirates put an end to a 20 consecutive losing season streak last night, winning their 81st game of the season 4-3 to over the Milwaukee Brewers. Travis Snyder homered in the ninth to give the Pirates the lead, and Mark Melancone nailed it down with his 11th save of the year. Pittsburgh will go for their first winning season since 1992 when they won the National League East tonight in Milwaukee against the same Brewers. That's all we have for today. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for our daily Iowan pregame coverage show as the Hawkeyes look to bounce back against the Missouri State Bears this weekend. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Cody. And Daily Iowan TV is the only place to see what's going to be in Thursday's edition of the Daily Iowan. Check out what the Iowa City community and Iowa legislators have to say about the recent conflict in Syria. And also read all about UI students who are turning poster printing into their own business. Well, that's your most current edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out at the same time tomorrow or anytime at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great night. Go Hawks!